Welcome back, everyone. Turning to our emphasis on self-care and well-being, please join me in welcoming Patty Lindstrom from Energy Corporate Yoga. As we begin, please grab your Finnegan Ford exercise bands as you may want to use them during this program. Patty is a yoga and pyro Pilates instructor, a personal trainer, and a registered dietitian. She began her yoga journey in her early 20s as a way to gain flexibility and calm the mind while training for marathons. It wasn't until 2014 when an injury sidelined sideline Patty that her practice became more consistent and her love for both the physical and mental benefits of movement, movement motivated her to pursue teacher training. Patty, please take it away. Thank you so much, Sydney. I so appreciate being here today. Thank you, Kim and Finnegan for having me. I am honored to speak to you today. So the objective of today is to discuss the importance and benefits of mindfulness and yoga to our overall physical and mental health and well-being. We will also experience how mindful movement can cultivate strength energy, calm, and clear mental focus. Slides, please. Are my slides up? Thank you so much. So today we're gonna move for wellness. And after my session, you will have a mindfulness breakout session where it'll be just like, you know, mingling um, as if we're in person. So um, next slide, please. Today's plan. So we're gonna talk about mindfulness. We're gonna have a centering moment, about a minute of just turning inward and letting go of our visual distractions. We're gonna discuss the research. We're gonna do some simple stretches. I hope to leave you with some tips and tools that you can take during your busy days to alleviate your stress and feeling overwhelmed. Hopefully I'll have some time at the end for some Q&A and next slide, please. So before we begin to center, I actually just wanna briefly discuss mindfulness. It's a buzz term, everybody's using it and um, it's simply focusing and paying attention on purpose and without judgment. So we can be mindful of our senses, our inner thoughts, our emotions, as well as what we're partaking in at a particular moment. Mindfulness allows us to respond as opposed to react. Mindfulness can be very simple, but it is definitely not easy. We can practice mindfulness seated as we are, standing, walking, eating, and even working. Examples of mindfulness include meditation, progressive relaxation, certain types of yoga, as well as Tai Chi. So we are going to take just a brief moment and just be mindful of our breath. So I'm going to have you sit so that your feet are planted firmly on the ground. Your knees are over your ankles. So you're gonna to have to scoot yourself up just a little bit in your chair so you're not sitting against it. Your hands are gonna rest on your knees. I want you to just roll the shoulders back and down once. Draw the belly button in towards the spine. Don't hold the breath, just engage your abdominals. I invite you to close your eyes. If that's not comfortable, you can just close them three quarters of the way. The reason we close our eyes is to turn inward. We're turning our focus inward and letting go of our visual distractions. And I want you to simply follow your breath. Don't try to force it or change it. I want you to simply follow the inhale through the nose close the lips and follow the exhale out the nose.
Thoughts are gonna come into your head. That's perfectly normal. Acknowledge them and then do your best to just put them aside. Prevent making a story out of those thoughts and return to your breath. Take a few more rounds, feeling the coolness of your inhalation and feeling the warmth of the exhalation. Take one more inhale and exhale. And if you closed your eyes, blink them open and then just relax. If you pushed away from your desk, come back in. So hopefully you feel a little relaxed. Was your breath fast and shallow? Or was it deep and slow? Our breath is such a powerful tool. Deep breathing allows us to lower our stress levels and create calmness in our bodies. So let's just talk about the breath. Alyssa Appel, a professor at UC San Francisco, says the rate and depth in which we breathe is a huge determinant of our mental state. In his new book, Breath, The New Science of a Lost Art, journalist James Nestor argues that modern humans have become pretty bad at the most basic act of living. We breathe through our mouths, into our chest, and we do it way too fast. So if you found that that's how you were breathing, we need to learn to breathe deep into our belly. When we breathe shallow and fast, it actually upregulates our nervous system and we feel anxious, we feel tense. When we breathe slowly, it actually turns on the anti-stress response. So the way we breathe sets off a cascade of physical changes in our body that promotes either stress or relaxation. Next slide, please. So breathing technically influences the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So our sympathetic nervous system is our fight and flight mode, whereas our parasympathetic nervous system is our rest and digest, our relaxation and calm branch of our nervous system. So in a 2017 study of highly anxious people, a group was assigned to do diaphragmatic breathing exercises twice a day. They found that that belly breathing, that diaphragmatic breath, breathing deep into the abdomen rather than your chest. After eight weeks, they reported feeling less anxious. They slept better. They had lower heart rates and lower skin conductivity and a slower rate of breathing. So a regular breathing exercise can help us feel calmer in everyday life, but other studies are suggesting that focusing on our breathing in moments of acute stress is also extremely helpful. So the benefits of mindfulness and meditation, we have an increased mental and emotional wellness when we take the time to be mindful or we take the time to meditate. Mindfulness is being present in the moment. Meditation is actually trying to self-regulate the mind and become a, in a deeper state of consciousness. So meditation is just a larger umbrella underneath mindfulness. So we are better able to manage our stress. We don't react, so we respond better and we actually have improved relationships and we decrease our psychological symptoms. So a misnomer of mindfulness and meditation is that we have to clear away our mind completely. So when we centered ourselves and we 
became mindful of our breath, of course there's thoughts in our mind. We're not going to completely empty our mind. It's not the way the brain works. It was made to think. But the practice is, and the goal is, is to acknowledge when those thoughts creep in and not to create any story. Don't give them any energy and watch them just simply go away. Research at Harvard Medical School suggests that meditation sharpens skills like attention, memory, and emotional intelligence. Meditation has the potential to decrease our anxiety, boost resilience, improve performance under stress, which don't we all need, lower our blood pressure, and as I said, improve our relationships. So there was a study in 2018 in the Science Daily that suggested people can derive physiological as well as psychological benefits from just one single mindfulness practice. The results suggested that a single session actually reduced their risk of cardiovascular disease in those with moderate anxiety. So the popularity of mindfulness and meditation is really growing among CEOs. So we're all aware that Bill Gates and Oprah Winfrey meditate, right? But are we familiar with some lesser known CEOs? So Ala Vasha is a creator and co-founder of Elements Truffles, which upon this research, they look amazing. She started meditating as a trader at Goldman Sachs, and it really helped just keep her stress level under control while she was on the floor even during a market crash. She was able to keep her calm. Shirag Patel is a CEO of Amnil Pharmaceuticals and he credits meditation with helping him feel more connected to his clients. And the CEO of Vastrum, Jonathan Tang, started introducing meditation to his staff to manage the traumatic experience brought about after 9-11. Next slide, please. So for mindfulness and meditation, we're gonna head into yoga. So chair yoga is super easy to incorporate into your day because you can just do it at your workspace. You don't need to lay out a mat. You don't have to change your clothes. The benefits of chair yoga are endless, but the ones that I think are most beneficial to us, more strength, increased flexibility, improved energy levels, a calmer mind, less depression, anxiety, which all of these coupled together is going to improve our productivity. And it's just gonna make us happier. Reviews of the literature also suggest that a yoga practice can impact multiple systems within our body. So metabolically, studies suggest that a regular yoga practice can help us have better control over our fasting blood sugars, our postprandial blood sugars, all important indicators of diabetes management. Yoga, as like mindfulness and meditation, also influences our sympathetic and our parasympathetic nervous system. So when we combine the breath with movement, or yoga really is just mindful movement, we are able to turn off that sympathetic nervous system, that fight or flight, and turn on our parasympathetic nervous system. Find relaxation and calm. So these are things that you can do during your day when they start, when the, you know, the day starts to feel overwhelmed and our mind is monkey brain. So next slide, please. So now we're going to take some time and actually move at our desk, okay? I'm gonna give you some stretches that you can do before your day to maybe feel empowered and clear your mind and shift from that to-do list to that excited to-do list. So I'm gonna show you briefly some different exercises. I am gonna incorporate this green band. So um, not a lot of yoga is done with um, bands, but I'm gonna show you one great stretch to open up the chest, facilitate deeper breathing, um, and really um, stretch out our shoulders 
and our back, but we're gonna start by getting out of our chairs. So I invite you, the green one is the, um, the lowest resistance. And then if you need to change it, you can, but we're gonna start getting out of our chair and I'm gonna show you a downward facing dog in our chair. So we're gonna use this chair and I am gonna come back so that you can see me fully. So if you want, you can step out of your chair. You can do this on your desk or take your hands on the back of your chair and walk out. So here I am stretching my back, my arms, the back of the legs, all the way from those outer hips down, past the knees and in to your calves. I'm gonna have you bend one knee at a time. You can turn your cameras off if you're not comfortable. That's fine, I understand. Your eye gaze is down. So we're lengthening the arms. Our bodies are compressed. Our spines are compressed. We need to lengthen and find space between the vertebrae. So just keep bending one knee at a time. Try not to have your shoulders too close to those ears. Good, and then just find stillness here. Draw the belly in, melt your shoulder blades down the back and really press your tailbone towards the wall behind you. Take a big breath in through your nose. Try to fill up in that belly and on your exhale, let it go. Good, bend one knee at a time and slowly walk back up to standing. Beautiful, roll your shoulders back. If you've been sitting all day, maybe shake your legs out. Do whatever feels good. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna sit in our chair. So thanks for joining me, those that you that did. And we're gonna take that same position. So come up so that your feet are firmly grounded down into the earth. Your hands are on your knees. We're gonna articulate our spine. So what we just did was lengthen because we're here all day, right? And we're here. So our chest the, is really tight which pulls us even further forward. So now we're gonna articulate our spine, warming up the muscles surrounding the spine. Some cat and cows. So those of you who do yoga may already be familiar with these that we do on our mat. Hands on your knees, open up the chest and arch your spine on your inhale, pull your shoulder blades back and down. Good, on your exhale, I want you to round your spine, take your gaze to your belly. Good, inhale, open, arch the spine, look up. So these are just cat cows. If you have Zoom calls or conference calls that you don't need to be on camera, exhale round. Do these simple stretches while you get some work done. I have a standing desk and I do what we're gonna do next on my desk. And when you're ready, slowly come back. Oh, nice. So Megan, you probably need some neck stretches, right? Yeah, <laughs> you can always do those, the ear to the shoulder and then the other one, a great one. I didn't have this plan, but reach the right arm up. Megan, you need this. Fingertips towards the sky, take your hand just on the left side of the head and just gently bring it over. So don't tug, be very careful with your neck. We don't ever wanna pull on it. Eye gaze can stay forward in this one. Take your inhale back to center, reach the right arm up and bring that hand down. We're gonna do the other side. Inhale, left arm up, relax the shoulder, bend the elbow, hand on the outside of your head and then gently just taking your head. So you're not pulling it, you're not tugging it. You're just gently taking your left ear towards your left shoulder. Beautiful, and then come back to center. Lengthen and release. So we're gonna take a quick hip opener, which this is the one that I do on my desk if I'm standing. Pick up your right knee, take your ankle. If you have heels on, I apologize. Your ankle is just above the left knee. And this is a seated figure four. So this hip might be super tight so that the knee is up here, that's okay but I just want you to ground down. So what's happening is we are compressing our spine. So everything is compromised. Our hips, our hip flexors, the inside of the front of your hips, and your glutes, 
your lower back and your hamstrings are all tightening up. Our bodies were not meant to sit for eight, 10, 12 hours a day without taking a break. Take your hands off or on that shin and take that leg off. We're gonna take the other one. So the left ankle just above the right knee. Sit nice and tall. You can press that left knee down, hands on your shin. So I didn't do it on the other side, but if you need more, so during your day, you can just come forward lengthening your spine. And now you're gonna feel when you come forward, a deeper stretch in that left hip, that outer hip and that glute. And then slowly come on up. Beautiful, we're gonna grab that band and I'm gonna show you cow face arms. So this is a great stretch to do with these arms. And I'm just gonna go this way so you can see. So grab your band. We're gonna take it in our right hand. So just hold one end of it, bend your elbow. So now this band is just coming to my back. Take this left arm, bring it around, and then take your forearm right at your lower back and find your band with your left hand. You can walk your hands up the band. So cow face arms can be really inaccessible for most people. And so this is what it looks like forward, your right elbow is up, your left elbow is down, and then you can pull on that band, relax your shoulders and breathe. So this really helps with deep breathing. We're, we're working the shoulders, the chest. Good, release your left hand first, bring that right arm around, release that left arm, shake it out, and we have to do the other side. So bring this left arm up, we're gonna bend at the elbow. So each side is always different. Our bodies are not that symmetrical. Unfortunately, we're tighter on one side than the other. Now bring your right arm around at your lower back, grab the end and then, and some people, you may be able to grab your fingertips. That's fine, you don't need that band. Good, and then open, breathe and smile. Good, take one more inhale and exhale. Release the right hand and bring that left arm around. Okay, so as you can see by the picture, prior to COVID, we actually went into the workplace, right? And taught chair yoga or mat yoga, uh, meditation, mindfulness, now everything is Zoom. So next slide, please. So let's talk about the science, the science behind recommending yoga, mindfulness and meditation. So Roger Sperry, a 1981 Nobel Prize winner for brain research, 90% of the stimulation and nutrition to our brain is generated by the movement of the spine. So movement and breath work together to ease our joint pain, restore elasticity to our spine. We improve our overall posture, right? And then we improve our overall health. If we can tap in to the nervous system, the metabolic system, if we can decrease and lower our risk of heart disease by a single session of mindfulness. Bruce Prairie is a trauma expert and he reports success in treatments, including rhythmic movements such as yoga, meditation, deep breathing, everything we're talking about, but even singing, dancing, drumming, as well as chopping or cutting. So when you're chopping vegetables or cutting, just that rhythmic movement, if you're in that mindset, if you are being present and aware in that moment, you can take yourself from a very high stress state to a calmer, more cognitive state. And then the study from the NIH is very exciting. Yoga is proven to help relieve back pain. So there is evidence that the effects of yoga and osteoporosis are connected. It's not gonna cure osteoporosis. Um, it may help ward it off, slow it, the progression down, but yoga has definitely been proven to relieve back pain. And probably the most exciting um, 
um, study that came out of the benefits of yoga and mindfulness. If you um, Google Mark Bertolini, he's the CEO of Aetna. He offered free yoga meditation classes to his 50,000 plus employees after a near death experience in a skiing accident. So more than a quarter of his company's workforce participated in at least one class and they reported a 28% reduction in their stress, a 20% improvement in sleep quality and a 19% reduction in pain. They became more effective on the job. They gave, gained an average of 62 minutes per week of productivity each, which Aetna estimated was worth 3000 per year Per employee. So Aetna was definitely at the forefront of movement that spread across the business world. But companies like Google, they offer emotional intelligence courses for their employees. General Mills has meditation rooms in most of their buildings. Companies like Goldman Sachs are teaching meditation on the job. So what Bertolini did not expect to see was that his health care costs had fallen. So paid medical claims per employee were down 7.3%, which amounted to $9 million in savings. The next year, health care costs did rise, but they remained about 3% lower than they were before the yoga and meditation was introduced to the company. So some significant yoga statistics that I wanted to share with you is that 54% of yoga practitioners say that yoga helps release tension. 15 minutes of yoga practice every day changes your brain's chemistry and boosts your mood. Again, from the sympathetic to our parasympathetic nervous system. The number of Americans doing yoga grew by 50% between 2012 and 2016. In 2015, there were 36.7 million people who participated in some form of yoga. The numbers from 2020, over 50 million people practice yoga. And it's not just for those of us that are busy working at our desks all day or the CEOs that are trying to improve their employees' health um, and well being, but it is so popular that professional athletes practice yoga. In fact, I had a networking call today with a former minor league baseball player, and he had told me that yoga is really big in baseball. It was part of their training sessions. Um, he found that it helped. He said it was really hard, um, but it's known that football players, wrestlers, they all practice yoga. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're gonna put it all together. I only have a few minutes. So we're actually gonna to put together the breath as well as the movement. And I'm gonna ask you, cause you've probably been sitting all day, okay? Like most of us to get up again. If you're not comfortable putting or having your cameras on, I totally understand, but we're gonna get up. And we are actually going to do a forward fold. So when you change the direction of your blood flow during your day, so if you know a regular downward dog, you don't have to do the one we did, but you can actually come down on your floor. We're not gonna do that today, but I'm just gonna do a forward fold with you to get the blood flowing in the opposite direction because it's energizing, revitalizing, and then it clears our mind and brings us mental clarity. So I want you to stand nice and tall, firmly press the feet into the mat, roll your shoulders back, and then on your inhale, slight bend in the knees, reach the arms up overhead, sweep them overhead. And on your exhale, bend your knees and bring those arms down, palms towards the earth and really bend your knees and hang heavy. So this is a forward fold. I want you to grab opposite elbows and sway side to side. So again, we're letting everything go. We're lengthening our spine, which counteracts everything we do all day. We're getting into those hamstrings. And then if you can press the elbows, towards the floor and now you're really getting a nice stretch in that upper back good find stillness release the elbows if you took them bend the knees and inhale sweep the arms up overhead pull the belly in to protect the spine 
Good, and then palms touch and exhale, bring your hands down to your heart center. So let's just do that one more time on our breath. So arms by your sides, bend the knees, inhale, sweep the arms up. And on your exhale, swan dive down, taking those palms towards the earth, fingertips to the mat. This time we're gonna bend the knees and on your inhale, sweep the arms up. Palms touch, exhale, bring your hands down to your heart center and down by your side. So I'm gonna use those bands one more time. So take your blue one, okay? And we are gonna open up our chest. So again, counteracting what we do all day, roll your shoulders back. And I want you to take the band so that you're holding it with your palms facing in. Down your back and you're gonna Open up the chest. So on your inhale, roll your shoulders back and down, squeeze the shoulder blades together and then lift the arms up. Cool, you should feel that deep stretch across the chest muscles. So those pecs, we need to get those pecs less tight so that our shoulders aren't rounding forward. Take one more breath in. Maybe lift those shoulders or those arms a little bit further and then exhale. Slowly bringing it down, good, and releasing. Roll the shoulders back, good. Shake the arms out, maybe shake those legs out. Nice, and then find your seat, good. Well, today to be mentally fit is just as important as being physically fit. So I hope I provided you with some tips and tools to help you get mentally fit, to improve your posture and stretch your tense, your tight muscles, but also to um, bring some peace and calm and balance to your busy, crazy, overwhelming days. So the next time that, you know, that parasympathetic or that sympathetic nervous system is going, that fight or flight mode, which happened to me right before we got on. Um, take some deep breaths, breathe, calm your mind. And if you can do it, close your eyes and turn inward. So next slide, please. I just wanted to conclude with some um, of my favorite quotes. So let your breath untie the knots in your body and mind. That's probably my favorite quote. Yoga is the dance of every cell with the music of every breath that creates inner serenity and harmony. And keep peace in your mind, strength in the body, and love in the heart. Next slide, please. So thank you so very much. I'm honored to be able to speak to you today. I hope, you gave, I hope I gave you something that you can take forward um, throughout your days. If you have any questions, please feel free. You can either put things in the chat or um, just unmute yourself and ask me.